Sheldon Meyeroff is a true entrepreneur. He launched Direct Recruiters Inc. at the age of 31 and successfully grew the business to a major executive recruiting company. In 2011, he started an exit plan at Direct Recruiters, and that's when he installed in his basement a rather elaborate wood shop. And over the past seven years, he's turned a hobby of woodworking and furniture making into a booming business. Success has come from specialization with a focus on designing, building, and selling custom-made river tables. A river table is two pieces of natural wood with a river of epoxy resin flowing down the middle. That's become 80% of his furniture making business. But let's start with Sheldon Meyeroff and a tour of the Chagrin Valley Custom Furniture Workshop in Warrensville Heights, Ohio. So um, you see here at the very front of our shop, we have our storage of wood that we buy for customers that have given us orders. And this wood is the most gorgeous stuff you've ever seen in your life. We're looking at everything from walnut to oak to hickory, elm, and uh, maple. Sheldon's workshop is a 6,000 square foot facility with all sorts of tools, machines, and woodworking equipment. Throughout the shop are dozens of river tables in various stages of fabrication. It's one of a kind, no two are alike, but we have to treat it like manufacturing because if we don't, um, we're not going to get the quality that we need. Okay. We look for the live edge on the edge of the wood. We face the two live edges together and we pour the river between the live edges. As a kid, my favorite person was uh, Thomas Edison because he was an inventor mm -hmm. and I wanted to be an inventor. But I found out later on I was so much like Thomas Edison in that Thomas Edison had learning disabilities mm. and these made things tough for him, but he rose above that. Shell wanted to be an engineer, but math was a subject that was incredibly difficult for him. He went to Cleveland State University and studied marketing instead and graduated in 1976. I came back to Cleveland and my uncle owned an employment agency and uh, I opened up a franchise of one of his employment agencies. Shell grew the franchise into a full-blown executive recruitment agency called Direct Recruiters Inc. But I was able to grow it to about 36 employees and about four to five million in business. And one day I wandered into a, a store that sold everything you need to have your own home shop. And I looked in there and my eyes went voila and uh, I said ah, this is it this is what I'm, I'm going to do okay. so I bought this machine two weeks after that and I started building my first project and never stopped for 17 years oh I was making tables credenzas bookcases um, everything for my family and my kids had every one of my kids and I had four had three four five projects in their house that I made so one day I just said, okay, let's just sell this place. And I did. And I started a company um, called Chagrin Valley. It started off with just me. Then it went to one employee, two, and three. This is in my basement. One of those early employees was a carpenter named Zach Schulte. I credit Shell with not only teaching me business and and work ethic and things like that, but having this job and working with Shell has kind of taught me life lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, it's made me kind of more mature, learn learn what it takes to be successful in this world. Um, so he's he's taught me a lot. I describe Shell as the absent-minded professor. He's one of the most unique people I know, but he's got one of the biggest hearts, and he's he's just. I mean, he's a great guy to work for all around. Let's get back to our interview with Sheldon. I basically failed those three years in business. Okay. I um, tried to be everything to everybody. So if somebody said they want a bunk bed, I build them a bunk bed. If a guy says I want a stereo cabinet, I build them a stereo cabinet. So I was making all these different projects, didn't really know what I was doing, hadn't been in a manufacturing business ever in my life, and didn't understand the concepts of how to make money in the furniture industry. I found my first niche was barn doors. Everybody on the planet wanted barn doors. So I started to be building barn doors a couple years into that. Barn doors paid the bills, but it was an entirely regional business, building and installing the doors in Northeast Ohio. 
The real change came when a customer asked Sheldon if he could build a wooden table with resin snaking through the middle in the shape of a river. They said, can you put resin in here? So I turned around to Zach. Zach, can we put resin in here? Zach says, what's resin? <laughs> <laughs> so we went on the internet and we saw how they did it. I said, okay, we're going to do this resin table. So we poured this table and God must have been looking over us. We didn't <laughs> screw it up because we're dealing with a thousand dollar piece of wood and we're dealing with about $800 worth of epoxy. And we could have screwed this the whole thing up so bad we take the whole thing and throw it in the garbage can. But it came out great. Okay. So then we got a second and a third and a fourth and we're getting all these orders for epoxy resin. We had to make them faster and they had to be more beautiful. Sheldon, Zach, and the team at Chagrin Valley Custom Furniture moved out of Sheldon's basement and into a new and expanded workshop facility. And they started making dozens of river tables, which sell for an average of $8,000 per table. So all my competition were Etsy guys working out of their barns, basements, and garages okay. that could do it for cheaper than I can do it because we have a high-level manufacturing process out there. And um, they had no clue about marketing. So I stormed the market with my marketing guys. We stormed the market, and we are the number one provider of Live Edge River Tables in the country. Wow. Has COVID-19 had any positive or negative impact on your business? I'll tell you it's been positive, and I'll tell you how. Okay, good. So people who have money, and we deal a lot with baby boomers. They got all the money right now. They've stockpiled it, they were smart, they saved, and they're going into their retirement homes and they want to live a nice life, but they can't travel, they can't visit their grandkids. There's all these things they can't do. So they buy a nice table for their house. What do you see as the the future to this company? Can it, you know, you said you're doing, I don't know, 10 to 12 tables a month. I mean, could you do 20, 30, 40? Or, I mean, it, it, how big is this market? And okay, so yes, I could see doing 20 or 30 tables, but that's not nearly as fulfilling as find another niche that we can go and dominate that other niche. I would like to develop two other niches, and we've developed them. Sheldon Meyeroff is 68 years old, but you'd never know it from his high level of energy and enthusiasm. He loves what he is doing, and he is so proud of the team at Chagrin Valley Custom Furniture. And the river table has become the niche for Chagrin Valley Custom Furniture. He made big mistakes early on, but he learned from those mistakes and moved on to create success. A picture is indeed worth a thousand words. If you go to www.chagrinvalleycustomfurniture.com, you can see for yourself. Shell and his team make beautiful handcrafted products. 